Hey guys, Tark with Cycle and FPV, and we are getting ready to build the Floss 210, one of the uh, TCMM frames that we're carrying in stock right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get the table split screen here, or picture in picture set up. Give me one second. And let's see, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this open, go through the package contents here, and see exactly how this is going to turn out. All right, first thing is we've got our, our uh, foam landing pads, a uh, set of screws, some 3D printed uh, mount for our camera. And then we've got our frame, uh, some nylon standoffs, another set of nylon standoffs, our aluminum standoffs, and then here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bag opened up. Bear with me one second. Let's get this going. Let me get this trash thrown out. Hold on. Okay. So, first thing we'll do, oops. First thing we'll do is get the parts laid out and then take a measurement with our calipers. So, here is our set of calipers here, and let's zero those out. All right, so here it goes. Um, this could be our base plate, and it looks like it's about three millimeters, so let's go ahead and see. It's about 2.993 millimeters, no problem. Set that aside, look at the arms. Uh, they're about four millimeters, so we'll take all four of those and set those aside. Okay. Uh, and you can see the dirt still here. I need to get, let me see if I go, yeah. Let me get this alcohol wipes here. I'm just gonna wipe this down. And I've said this in some other videos and I'll say it again here. Uh, when you get a frame, I mean, it depends on obviously, uh, like when we, when I make mine, when I cut them, I wash them first. I mean, I, I wash them afterwards and I buff them and everything. But, you know, I always think it's a good practice when you get a frame, just go ahead and wash it anyway. Uh, nice, uh, like a warm soap and water, put it in a bowl and then just kind of uh, move it around on the water, get it kind of cleaned off, and then dry it, and then you'll be good to go. Because there's always a chance, if it hasn't been washed, that you're going to get some carbon fiber dust in there. You kind of don't want that on your hands and on anything else. So uh, let me go wipe all this down here real quick. All right, set these aside. Wipe the bench here just a little bit. Okay, so there's our parts. And then we have our top plate, which looks like it's about two millimeters. Uh, it's almost two millimeters, 1.98, 2.0, whatever, right around there. Um, and then this will be a piece that goes on top. I told you you can put your antenna through that. That's 2.82. It's just a small piece. So let's get to building this real quickly, okay? I'm not going to put the landing pads on because that's not important. Um, so here's the deal with this, though. Uh, I'm not really sure why they included this in here. Um, usually we would use this if we're going to be using different sized boards, for example, when I've used something like this. It's to put a piece on here, uh, and this is actually, these are 30.5 by 30.5 uh, on the whole set, which would line up perfectly with this. It's just that in this case, right, this is also where the arms are going on this screw right here. So it's going to be interesting to see where this would come into use, but probably improvise just a little bit, uh, and I'll give you an idea. All right, so first thing is um, make sure you recognize the front from the back, and because this hole is right here, and this little, the top, which looks like a wrench, goes right here. You can tell this is the back of your frame, right? Also, your arms are gonna go right here, and here, and then again here and here. One thing to notice is that you also have a 20 by 20 stack, uh, arms, uh, sorry, um, uh, pattern right here. And so your arms are gonna start before then, which means that if you're running a 30 and a half, uh, you will actually uh, be putting the um, uh, board on top of the arm here. I did think about mounting it this way with the arm underneath, but it's not how it was designed. Uh, but it would, in that case, fit well as well. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and just do it this way, and let's go ahead and open the screws up. And my guess is with this, you're, well, I don't know, you may have three sets of screws, three different sizes, but uh, let's look at what we got here. So we've got our long screws. Oh, they did give camera screws on this one. So I'm gonna set these over to the side here, okay? So let's move these bags and not get these mixed up. So we have one, two, these are our fasteners. There we go. And I will tell you that um, I've seen a picture of something similar to this before. And I think that, to be honest with you, there's probably not one way to build this. There's a couple different ways. And it really depends on what you're trying to do with it and what components you're using, okay? So we know the small screws, for example, are going to be for the standoffs, right? So if we were to put this in here, uh, sorry, not here. I'm trying to find the standoff here. Where's the top plate? Okay, so for the top plate, we could use this, right, for the standoff. And that would be an option. 
Um, but they did give a lot of screws in this setup, right? I mean, there's a lot more than I would normally see. So we're gonna kind of try to play around with this and see the best setup possible. Uh, first thing is though to recognize where the holes are for the, um, for the mounts. And that's gonna be right here. So let's go ahead and get those arms put in first. And we're gonna use the long screws here because we know that it has to go through the arm and then into the standoff, right? So now I'm gonna open this bag of standoffs. And you're gonna have three standoffs, two of which are the same size most likely. And then the other one's gonna be offset, which would be almost pretty much the uh, width of the arm here, because that one's gonna sit on the frame while the other ones sit on top of the arm. So let's take the short ones, which go up front. And right now you just finger tighten those, that's not a big deal. Take the other one, take another long screw. So there we go. So now we have the two front arms put on, although we have not put the second set of screws on there yet. And this is where it, you know, this is where the things come into play is, um, this frame, you can run your battery on the top or on the bottom, okay? So if you wanna run it on the bottom, then you can mount the screws uh, upside down like this, right? And you can actually put the fastener, well, this is the long screw, this is not the right screw. There's another screw, this one. It's uh, not the longest one, it's not the short one. You could actually put it like this. And therefore, when you run it on the bottom, you can uh, still put your LiPo on top like that, and you're not gonna bump into this uh, fastener right here. However, if you're going to put your battery on the bottom, then you will want to mount the screw with this. Now look, you can see the different size here. So this is a medium screw, right? You'll wanna put it like this. Now this is how I usually see people do it. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna do it just like that, okay? And we'll just move on with it and see what happens. So let me get this. Let's see if we can kind of... All right, now let's do the next one. Find another screw. There it is. We'll do it from the top like this. There we go. All right, now, with those arms in place, we'll now go to the back. So here is where you're gonna to have to decide how you wanna do this side. Now, the same thing exists though. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and um, figure out where, uh, what screws we're gonna use for this. Okay, so we've got a set of long screws here, right? And then we've got a medium screw right here. And we should have a couple more of those. So um, for the sake of just keeping this consistent, we're gonna mount this one the same way. Run it up and then put the uh, fastener right here all right and then here's where it gets a little uh, tricky is if you want to use a 30 by 5 um, board then you would actually uh, not put uh, the next screw in right here you would use a longer screw and I'll show you why but let me put this one on first this next arm on first see if I can kind of make it a little easier to see so now if you wanted to mount this underneath you could um, I haven't really uh, seen a dilemma by doing that, but let me just kind of show you what we're up against here, okay? So here's the second one, right? And now we want to do a, uh, let's say we want to run a 30 by 30 board, or 30.5 by 30.5. Don't don't worry about the half millimeter correction. I, I know that it's there. You just don't feel like seeing half a millimeter every time. Um, all right, so when we have it like this, to run a 30 by 30 board, we've got to put a standoff here, and then we've got to put the board here, and we've got to offset it, right? Well, the problem is the standoffs that come with this board, I'm going to assume are five millimeter standoffs. I'm, and I could be wrong here, but let's just see. So, so if they're five millimeter, actually it says that they're six, but okay, so six millimeter. So we have a two millimeter difference between the, the height of this arm and the height of the standoff, and I'll show you why that's important. So let me put, um, let me put this small screw here. And then I'm going to put one of the nylon standoffs right there. I'm use another small screw here. And I'm gonna put another nylon standoff right here, okay? So there, right? So we're good so far. Problem is, is that we have four millimeters here and six millimeters here, so we have a two millimeter gap. So what I would say is at this point, you take a long screw, like one of these ones, the longer ones, set it up through there. Okay, and now we've got to offset the two millimeters. Now, two millimeters on this would be a fastener, 
Okay, one of these fasteners is about two millimeters tall. Well, here they actually, these are kind of bigger fasteners. These, these could be three millimeters actually. Let me see what this measures at. These are kind of thicker ones, so let's see. Yeah, it is actually three millimeters. Okay, so this fastener won't work because now you're gonna have three and four sevenths. So you're still gonna be off by one. So let me take that one off. If you have the tools to do it, what you would basically do is add a one millimeter or two millimeter standoff. And let me show you what that's gonna look like, okay? A two millimeter standoff, we've got plenty of them here. Um, a two millimeter standoff would look something like, like this right here, okay? These are two millimeter standoffs. And to be honest with you, most of the nylon fasteners like these are two millimeters, but for some reason these are gonna be a little taller. So let's just add a two millimeter standoff. Okay, and then from there, uh, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna grab another long screw. Sorry, let me get this in here properly. Okay, let's add another two millimeter standoff right here. Perfect. Now, at this point, um, I can do pretty much anything at this point with this setup. So I'm gonna take this little, uh, where's this piece? This piece right here that came with it. I'm gonna use this to represent the board that we would normally be putting here, like a flight controller or something, or ESC, whatever it may be, and I'm gonna show you exactly what we end up with, okay? Okay, now I haven't tightened this down yet, but if you look, because of the way we offset this now, we've got a good spot here for a 30 by 30 board. So you could put a 30 by 30 here, or you could take that off and you could run your 20 by 20, okay? So you've got your option for either two, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it like this because I would normally run a 30, 30 board on here. Oh, let me get these off. So let me just tighten this down. Okay. All right, now, uh, this one. That one's good, that one's good. Yep, okay, so now let's go ahead and tighten the board down. And I'm sorry, tighten the arms down now. And I'm just gonna quick tighten them, I'm not gonna really worry about it too much. But let me do this. There's one. Two. one here okay all right so that's four right so we're good with that everything looks good here now the last thing to do is going to be to put we do have our um our camera mount here so let me go ahead and uh, get that taken care of too let's cut this off okay Let me see, I guess we'll just slide these on. Okay, and then uh, let's move this out of the way. And now we gotta put our um, other standoff on. Now, I did notice that there's a lot of leftover screws here, and this is a second pack I've opened that's like that, so I assume it's not a mistake. So we're gonna use our medium screws here, and as long as it'll allow us to fasten this all the way down, sometimes the threading stops early on the standoffs, and I guess in this case, it does as well. So hold on, let me just see if that's not gonna tighten. No, it tightened pretty good. So there you go, so that's good. So use the longer standoffs if you can, and even in this case, uh, we're good. Now, now it's time to put the top on. So we're gonna put the top on here. And if you can get away with using a long uh, screw, great. If not, the shorter screws are for it on this one. I'm just gonna use a shorter for now because I don't know if that's gonna go all the way through without, getting, uh, without being, uh, running out of threading. So let me use a shorter one here. Okay, there's one. And then we'll use another shorter one on this side. Okay. 
Okay, and there's two. All right, then we've got our little antenna holder here. So what will happen is, and for this one, I would definitely use a medium screw. So we're gonna run that through the top there, and we're gonna run it through here. And this is pretty cool because, although, although it is carbon fiber, which I would say you'd probably need to just print one, because when you run an antenna through carbon fiber, you're destined to have a signal loss. All right, but anyways, so that's it. So there's your frame. It's pretty light, actually. Let me grab the scale here. Get an idea of how light this is. First, let me grab a 50 gram weight to make sure it's calibrated. Uh, there you go, 50 grams, okay. So now let's see how much this weighs. Uh, with everything like it is, uh, 65 grams, exactly, okay? So that's good. So this is a pretty decent frame right there, guys, and it uh, looks like it's gonna be very sturdy. I, again, I don't know all the options for the screws and why they left so many in the kit, uh, but we are pretty much out of pieces at this point. They did give you some more standoffs, which my guess would be that um, the standoffs could be used on the 2020, uh, or you can use a sizing plate, and, and this is usually what we would do to add different parts to it. So most likely you would build this up and you could add your receiver or you could add your VTX here and zip tie it or, or double, uh, double tape it down. But that's the build right there, all right? It's pretty cool, pretty simple frame. Uh, I'm very pleased with it in here. I'll give you a close up of that. So there it is right there, okay? And that is the uh, Floss 210, the TCMM Floss 210. You'll find it on our website. So if you have any questions, by all means, email me at targetcyclonefpv.com. Uh, please subscribe to our channel right there. And also please follow us on Facebook. All right, guys? Listen, it's getting close to Christmas time. Uh, we got about six days, I think, till Christmas. Make sure to spend time with your family, guys. Don't get too lost in all this gift buying and stuff. Spend time with your family. Is, uh, you never know how long you have. And I can tell you this year will be the first year I don't see my kids for Christmas, and it, it really sucks. So make sure that you guys spend time with your kids, spend time with your family, put the drones down for a little bit, okay? God bless, guys. Be careful, and we'll see you soon. Bye.